Hello and welcome to JavaScript for Beginners. All right, I think we should actually start off with saying what JavaScript is, where it's available, and furthermore, what it is not. So let's just start off with number one. What is JavaScript not? JavaScript is not Java. There's a big distinction between Java and JavaScript. Java has been around longer than JavaScript. JavaScript was only named JavaScript so that it could leverage some of the popularity behind Java back in 1995, and they're actually not related at all. In fact, Java is strictly a server-side language, and JavaScript is almost strictly a front-end language, although it can be used as a server-side language now because it's been adapted to work that way. But the key takeaway here is Java is not JavaScript. So whenever you're talking about JavaScript, please don't just call it Java because that's going to confuse other developers. Number two, every web browser uses it. 100% of all web browsers use JavaScript. Now you as a user on let's say Chrome or Firefox, you can decide to disable JavaScript if you want to, but your browser comes with it. So whenever you download a browser, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Edge, even Internet Explorer comes with JavaScript support. In fact, JavaScript is actually the only language that you can use on the front end. So let's put that in there too. JavaScript is the only coding language that you can use on the front end. It's the only one. There's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that makes up the entire front end stack of any website. HTML and CSS are not languages. JavaScript is a coding language, and it's the only one out there. And that actually contributes to its massive growth and popularity because there are no other choices. You have to know JavaScript to be a front end web developer. Okay, number four, as a developer, you're going to hear lots of words. You're gonna hear things like jQuery, React, Vue, Angular, libraries, and frameworks. There is a difference between all of these. And we will get more into this as the course goes on, but behind the scenes, behind jQuery, React, Vue, and Angular, it's just vanilla JavaScript. It is all written in plain, boring JavaScript. A library is a JavaScript file or a set of functions that allows you to make shortcuts. So, uh, for example, jQuery is a library, and that's because it doesn't really come with all the extra things that a full framework does. And a framework is like React, Vue, or Angular, where it comes with more than just binding event listeners, it comes with a certain way of writing things, it comes with a certain style, a coding style that is, on how you actually write your code, and it does almost everything you need. So that's the difference between a library and a framework, but we'll talk more about those in the future. Number five, can you use JavaScript online or offline? Yes, the answer is yes. You can use JS offline. Now, why do I say that? Or how do I say that rather? Is JavaScript, whenever you hit a website, whenever you view a website, your browser downloads a bunch of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript along with images and maybe a few other files. And your browser tries to cache those so that it doesn't have to reload it over and over and over again. Once you have a JavaScript file, you can execute that file in your browser even if you don't have internet. So even if you don't have internet throughout this entire course, guess what? You can simply open up your browser and you can type code right in here, which is something I'll show you in just a little bit, and it will just say, hi world. And that is JavaScript, so you don't need internet for it. With that said, a lot of websites still have some sort of API out there, and you're going to still need internet to actually leverage the full usage of JavaScript. However, you don't necessarily need it all the time. JavaScript files, JavaScript files end in .js. So just like in HTML, when you were learning HTML, it was .html, or CSS was .css, or .python, .py, right? So it's the same thing, so .js, and you're going to see this all over the place as well. So all JavaScript files end in .js. And last but not least, you can create entire programs using JavaScript these days. So it started off once upon a time, you could only create programs in certain languages like C or C++. And then it sort of shifted towards things like Python, where you can make entire Python programs for an operating system. And now you can actually do the same thing with JavaScript. And the nice thing about that is it's one language to rule them all. 
So what you can do is you can create an entire program and it can be on multiple operating systems. It can work on your mobile devices. It doesn't matter if it's iOS or Android or Windows or Mac or Linux or anything else. It's one system to rule them all. And a good example of this is Spotify, Spotify and Slack. These are two huge applications that have for a very long time been using something called Electron. And what this does is it basically compiles all of your JavaScript into an actual program and then you can go and send it to people to download on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, iPhone, you name it, it has support for it. And so now JavaScript, let's actually write this out. JavaScript is used to create entire programs. So that is sort of seven fun facts about JavaScript. We're going to get into a lot more of this stuff as time goes on. To finish off this video, on the left you see my editor. I am using VS Code. It is made by Microsoft. It is completely free and you can get it by simply downloading it. You're going to need a text editor like this, so if you don't already have one, I would suggest VS Code. On the right, I simply have Google Chrome open. It's a browser and in fact, all I did here was I went to about blank, so brand new page, right click inspect. And if you go into your console up here, and let's make that bigger, you can actually write JavaScript right in here as well. Hello, hi, 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 just like that. And we have some JavaScript. So you're going to see that my screen is split up into two. So I've got my editor on the left and then I've just got a browser on the right. Something like that. If you have two monitors, you can use two monitors. You can just flip between full screen on uh, VS Code or your text editor and Chrome or whatever browser you want to use. It doesn't have to be Chrome. But this is how I have it set up in the video so that you can see all of it just laid out in front of you. With that said, let's jump to our next lesson where we are going to create our first JavaScript script.